Welcome to the Featured Anime Podcast. I'm your host, Jack. And today I'll be talking about the vision of Escaflone. Uh, Rick is not able to join us today. He has some family obligations that he has to uh, tend to. Nothing bad. He'll be back. He just uh, didn't didn't plan out his uh, week right. So unfortunately, it's just going to be me today. Uh, hopefully, I do it a little bit of justice uh, without the dynamic duo portion of it. I will certainly do my best to try and uh, keep things short and concise and straight to the point because I know it's going to be kind of boring listening to just yours truly ramble. Uh, but if you want to help support the show and everything and, and help us grow, you can go to patreon.com slash featured anime podcast, a dollar a month. They'll get you access to bonus content with, that we usually do put out with every episode. Uh, we also have affiliate links for you in the show notes. So you go there, click on those links, purchase anything using those links. We do get a little bit of a kickback. It is very much appreciated. And if you want to purchase some of our own swanky swag, you can go to shop.featuredanimepodcast.com. And of course, for anything that you uh, buy on there, it'll, it'll definitely help contribute to us and help us grow like that. And of course, for anything and everything, all our information and everything like that, you can go to www.featuredanimepodcast.com. And now on to the me and bro tatoes. The vision of Escaflone came out in April, 1996 and ran all the way to September, 1996. It's 26 episodes long produces for it are Tokyo TV and Bandai visual. The studio for it is sunrise. It's an original. So there is no source material for that. And uh, the genres are adventure, fantasy, romance, isekai, mecha, and psychological. Now, uh, Hitomi is an ordinary high school girl who's got an interest in fortune telling using uh, tarot cards. And then one night while she's trying to run to get her uh, her courage up to to basically have a boy that she's very infatuated with, you know, tell her get, basically gives him an ultimatum in the very beginning saying, hey, if you run, if I run and I beat beat this time you'll give me my first kiss before you leave to London because you're leaving the country. Well, during that time frame, during that's going on, she ends up running into a boy named Van who suddenly appears in front of her being teleported from the world called Gaia. And at the exact same time, a dragon also comes there as a result of this, the boy and the dragon fight and he kills the dragon. And when he's being taken away back to his world, as a result of this, Hitomi is being taken with him back to their world. Now, in this new land, uh, Hitomi soon discovers that Van is actually a prince in the kingdom called Finalia. Uh, and then it gets attacked by an evil empire soon after he gets crowned king of that kingdom. Uh, in an attempt to fight him off, Van uh, uses his family's ancient guy, Melf, Escaflone. It's a which is the mech battle suit that everyone uses in this world. Uh, but he's not able to defeat them, and his whole kingdom is destroyed as a result. Now, on the run, he told me and Van encounter an Austrian knight named Alan, and he told me is is very infatuated and and shocked and enamored by the fact that he looks like her crush from Earth, the very same crush that she tried getting to give her her first kiss. Um, with the with all of that being said, that really sets us up for the 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 foundation I want to say for Escaflone, and it follows them all the way through. So as a result of them going to the go, running into this night, the night Allen, uh, you have this evil empire Zybok who is hell bent on getting Escaflone and getting Vaughn. And at first the, the reasoning behind it is not really clear, but then you realize that one of the main characters, main baddies, at least were portrayed as a baddie. Vulcan is actually Vaughn's brother. And you, you find this out about, I don't know, about 10 episodes into it, 12 episodes into it. When Van actually does get captured, he finds out that, that Vulcan is his brother and Vulcan 
was originally thought to have been either killed or he ran away during the trial. And it's kind of actually both. He he died in the sense of who he was died and he did run away. However, what ended up actually happening was he lost an arm trying to complete the trial and he learned about the true nature of the dragons and why they really attack at that time. And that's how he was able to survive. And it wasn't even on purpose. It was by accident. As a result of this, though, he gets taken by Zybok Empire and he's trained in their ways, the ways of science. And they believe in science more so than anything else. And one of the things that that's really kind of interesting for me was the vision of, and the portrayal of science in this in this series. Uh, Falcon, he's taken by the Empire of Zybok after the events that I described. and they they are literally taking thought and matter and then somehow combining them and turning them into a liquid. And at the exact same time, they're using it to be able to foretell or see the future. One of the biggest things, though, one of the biggest roadblocks on why they're so hell bent on getting Vaughn or and soon Hitomi is when Vaughn and Hitomi are close to each other and they their love starts to blossom or grow. It throws the vision of that future that the empire emperors of Zybok sees uh, Dornkirk into disarray or blocks them from being able to see it all the way. And they, they rely heavily, not so much on destiny, but fate. Now, normally one of the main plot points for a lot of animes is they, they really focus on and, and drive on, destiny it is your destiny to do this it's your destiny to do that however i feel like they chose fate because they also they also play on changing fate not so much changing your destiny but changing your fate to something else and and they they really drive heavy on that and they also rely heavily on luck and and at some points it becomes really ridiculous on on the luck factor they they pump liquid blood luck into a to a couple of uh side characters that are there for a while by Falcon and and just by them having an insurmountable amount of luck they're able to to stop or or completely kill uh Escaflone and not, not kill, like shut down the power source. He just stops working. It's like by luck, he just happens to stop working when he gets in within a certain distance of them. And so it's really becomes quite comical, but they, they focus heavily on fate and they, they talk about fate and how it's alterable and not alterable and how they're trying to do it. But then they also take the power of thought which I find really interesting in this anime because it studies and science has shown that thought can, can affect you on a cellular level. I mean, just even taping words, negative words or positive words on wa- bottles of water has shown to change it on a molecular level. So your thought, the intention that you're saying something or the intent behind something is just really fascinating that they they play so much on it on that and as the story actually progresses through you you can't help but get enveloped into that ideology and they actually start pointing out to Hitomi one one of the one of the things that they really start pointing out towards her is they 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 tell her like the reason why you're all these bad things are happening. The reason why these are happening is because you want it to happen. Your anxiety and your negative uh, negativity, your thoughts, all that is influencing that into a reality. You are part of the problem. Like what you're doing is, is causing these issues. And if you don't stop that, there's going to be greater repercussions now, Hitomi inherently understands that and she wants to try and push forward and she doesn't want to uh, to have those negative side effects, negative outlooks on life. But she ends up doing that anyways and further causes these issues. One of the other things that they that really scares her in this world is is her fortune telling is so accurate. It's scary. Like she could tell you 
intimate details about your life that no one has told you about in Gaia. However, in in Earth, it's like yeah, kind of it's vague enough, but yeah, it's, it can apply to anyone. But the details and understanding that she has, the visions that she has, is really ma- miraculous. And then she's able to tell and foretell where people are. In the immediate future, almost, it seems like where she's able to tell and see the intention behind someone and where they're at. And so that that inherently scares her, but is what makes um, Dornkirk of the Zombok Empire really want her is the fact that she can foretell the future in such a way that she can see or foresee where these cloaked individuals are because Zornberg prides themselves on their high level of technology. They have cloaking devices, but she's able to point, point them out and see them. And she's helping Vaughn get all the way through this. And I, I just, I find it really, really fascinating and interesting um, too, that, that her, her want to change and desire to change also at the exact same time is what hinders her and her fear is, is ultimately what really kind of prevents her from being able to push forward and and progress forward. Um, I mean, she's a, she's a standard high school girl. So she, she's very conflicted about certain emotions. She has a lot of anxiety because a a lot of people, especially boys, girls, anyone, teenager, high anxiety, you're going to have problems. You're not going to know what you want. You're not going to know, know what you want to do. And, she definitely envelops that. Now she is, she's kind of mature for her age, but at the exact same time, everyone else, I feel like they're a lot older than her. So they shouldn't take a lot of what she says to heart. Um, and should understand like how they need to deal with her. But at the exact same time, I can understand she's, she's from this place called the mystic moon, also known as earth. And, and she has these fortune telling prophecies and she can tell your future and your fortune and, and, and know exactly what's going on. But at the exact same time too, they, they put a lot of stock in it and she knows that. And she's afraid to give the fortunes, but then she's also gives an impression that she feels like she can alter or change the future, change the fate of people, which technically she can given the, the power that she actually has along with what Don Kirk and, and others have, it's the, the, the power of thought, especially more so for her comes into reality. The, she doesn't necessarily want these bad things to happen. She wants to prevent bad things from happening, but she's her anxiety of always worrying and feeling like something bad is going to happen to someone ends up resulting in that becoming a reality. Um, so as a result of it though, um, as a result of her even trying to attempt to change fate, she ends up progressing, progressing everything along and pushing it along. And the, the overall story I felt was, was solid. It's not the world's best story by any stretch of the word, by any stretch of the imagination. In all honesty, there, it, it, it left a lot to be desired for me personally. There were some points where it just felt really droned on really drug on. Um, and then at a certain point, and then at a certain point, it just felt like it was kind of rushed a little bit. Now, I did read and, and look up saying seeing that it originally was supposed to be a lot longer of an anime. It wasn't supposed to be just 26 episodes. It was supposed to be a longer running anime. However, they ended up not being able to do that. Uh, so I feel like they may have probably rushed it. I don't, I don't know the full details about it. I'll probably dig into it a little bit more and, and talk about it later on, but it is, it, it definitely just felt a little bit, a little bit rushed towards, towards the end. Like they were just rapid fire, trying to wrap everything up, trying to close everything off in the end. But at the same time, I mean like that, it really wasn't that bad because I felt like 26 episodes was, was a perfect length. And for them to continue on and to to push past those 26 episodes, honestly, would be really, really hard. And I I, I don't think that they would have perfectly been able to do a decent anime like they did with this one. 
Um, again, I don't feel like this is the world's greatest anime. I don't feel like the story is, is anything magnificent. Um, but it is unique enough. I personally can't remember anything, at least in recent history for me personally, where we have a similar story to this versus something else. So it is definitely worth a watch. If, if you're into the mecha anime type thing, uh, another thing that, that really play, why they really play into the fate is, is fate isn't just like where you're going to be at in, in life, like the final destination, or it's your destiny to do this one thing. Fate is, is an accumulation of several different things like fate alteration. And they do fate alterate altering experiments where you were supposed to be someone else and they change artificially changed your fate and became, you became someone else. And they're doing experiments like that on on people and and they delve into that and i felt it was very well done uh that even after those forced changes were put into place ultimately they went back to who they were or what they were and that is not to say that 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 changes can't be made in in such a way but for them for this story is your fate was supposed to be like this. And so we're going to force change your fate and it just didn't work out. Um, however, how one of the things that they did force change in the fate was swaying of the heart. Now, normally in a lot of shows and movies, they don't allow you to, to openly change or modify someone's free will or, or heart or love. And this anime, they part of the fate change, fate alteration was the ability to completely change that. And so one of the people to, to point out specifically Alan, they tried changing his fate, fate, the fate of who he's supposed to love, change it to make it. So that way he is in love with Hitome, the Zybok empire to draw her further away from Vaughn. And it makes it to where Alan is almost obsessed with her, but at the same time, not. And You'll you'll have to honestly just really watch the watch the series, watch the show, and and truly get it. It is well, well worth the time. It's good for a once through, for for sure. Uh, beyond the once through, beyond going watching it more than once, I definitely wouldn't say that. I do know that there is a movie that also came out, and I haven't seen it. I don't know anything about it, so I may check that out as well. It is it, it definitely. It definitely has piqued my interest in it. That is for sure. So I'll, I'll definitely have to check that out. Um, but onto a score though, for me personally on a scale of up to 10, I would give this a solid six. It was a great story. It's not too great. The music was kind of weird, but it's, it's a nineties anime. And so the music is going to be there. I didn't care for the animation too much. It was kind of, Depending on the situation, it was either good or bad. Uh, the story writing could have been a lot better, but it could have been a lot worse. It was definitely unique, which caused me to enjoy it uh, for the most part. It did have plot holes. I didn't really touch that on on that too much, um, but it did have some plot holes or unique points where where you had that. Uh, one of the great character progressions was Vaughn. You had him grow and progress all the way through the, uh, through the anime. And then you saw the, the regression of the character and then the progression of that character at the exact same time. So they, I felt like they had the flow for him pretty solid, even though it was a little rushed. So yeah, six, six out of 10 for me. So next week we're going to be watching beast tamer. It's a recommendation by damn it. Janet and Jeb is who who uh recommended it uh they think it's a it's a cute anime and they think that rick will like it um they recommended it the reason why they recommended it is because despite the fact that there are fights in it it's a slice of life anime so we know how rick absolutely loves those slice of life romance animes uh so we'll definitely have to give that one a watch and check it out uh well 
that's all the time that I honestly have for today. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope I did justice for you on the solo episode. I certainly did my best or tried to do my best for you all. So a positive thoughts and, and no anxiety is definitely much appreciated. Uh, if you uh, want to check out some of the other shows or things like that, that we've done and, and that we've talked about, you can go to featured anime podcast.com we'll link you right to our podcast page and as well as any and all other information. If you want to buy some of the swanky swag that we have shop dot featured anime podcast.com. If you want to uh, check out our patron exclusive content, patreon.com slash featured anime podcast, a dollar a month will get you access to that bonus content. And if you, uh, if you want to buy the show that I talked about today, you can check out our show notes and uh, we do have affiliate links for you in there. You go there, click on the link, purchase anything using those links. We do get a little bit of a kickback and it's very much appreciated. And until next time, I'm Jack and we'll catch you later. <laughs>